Hi everyone, my name is Robbie Moore, and this is my YouTube channel. Now, seeing how yesterday went when I actually used an editing system, and we got that big ass logo across the screen, I decided I'm not going to do it this time, because frankly, it really frustrated me. And so what I'm doing instead, I'm just going to do this one long take, and hopefully I don't mess up too much. But this is it. What the two lists I make every single year, the best and the worst, what I find is that a lot of people are interested in hearing what is your favorite movie of the year? What are your favorite movies of the year in that case? When it comes to the worst, people are like, I want you want to listen and watch what are your worst movies of the year? What are the movies that truly did crawl over my skin? I won't make any more Linkin Park references, I'm sorry. But... This is the first year since 2013 to where I didn't indulge myself in a bunch of crap. This is the first year to which I didn't go out and try to watch terrible movies or movies that I thought would be terrible, with the exception of one. So with that being said, this list is compi com compiled through a few aspects. Movies that I found disappointing, okay, didn't live up to expectations, maybe some bad movies, and yes, one got off a movie that we will get to it eventually. And keep in mind, this list is completely my opinion. If you like these movies, kudos. If you don't, if you dislike these movies like I do, kudos. And also keep in mind, this video is going to be made in alphabetical order. So there's no, there's, there isn't a certain order, it's just, you know, how the ABCs go. And so let's jump into it. My first movie I'm going to be talking about is a Netflix special called The Babysitter. Awesome. Yeah, so The Babysitter was a movie that debuted on Netflix a couple of months ago, directed by Mick G. I have a very wonky relationship with The Babysitter in the sense that I hated it for the first 20 minutes. I thought The Babysitter was absolute shit. The, the acting was bad, I thought the writing was horrendous, and it was edited in such a jarring and unflattering way that I thought this, is, this might be the second worst movie of the entire year. But as the movie progressed, it became even more insane, even more crazy, and it kind of became a guilty pleasure for me. It's an, I don't think it's a good movie by any means. There was so much wrong with this movie in terms of plot and plot holes. But at the end of it, I had a lot of fun watching the babysitter and all of its craziness and just how bad and how kind of boundary pushing it could be with just the pure insanity of it all. My second film, uh, second favorite, the second movie I'm going to be talking about is a movie that might stir some controversy, but honestly, why did they remake Beauty and the Beast? I'm sorry it's backwards, but, you know. Seriously, why, why does this movie even exist? The translation between the animated film and the live action film I thought was very awkward. A lot of the household items like Cogsworth, Lemire, don't look fantastic as CGI, I think it works best in the animation to where they can have the over-exaggerated faces and it works in that. And just a lot of the casting I thought didn't work. Emma Watson was okay as Bella at best. While I did love Luke Evans as Gaston, I thought Josh Gad made a good, um... I forget the dude's name, but he was pretty solid in the movie. But the movie itself didn't give a purpose to why it existed. People have made the argument, well, the movie fixed the plot holes in the animated movie. But I would argue if those plot holes were so big and so prominent, then the movie wouldn't be hailed as a classic. You know, yes, a movie can have big plot holes such as the original Star Wars, but if the movie is made in such a way, in such... made in a special way, then it can overcome the plot holes. And that's what Beauty and the Beast was. The 1991 film is a Disney classic. No argument can be made. It is an ups absolute classic that did not need a, a, a live-action remake. I'm sorry. My next film I'm talking about is another Netflix movie called Bright that debuted on Netflix maybe a couple weeks ago. So it's Will Smith. Now here's the thing with Bright. The world and the lore is fantastic. I love being in this world to where there's an alternate universe to where fairy tale elements exist, such as minotaurs, elves, fairies, and orcs. To me, that was a very interesting take. But the actual story within the world just did not deliver. It was full of cliches. The movie felt like it was trying to be hard out too much with the consistent F-bombs and curse words, the amount of gratuitous violence I felt. I didn't 
earn the R rating as much as trying to be like, hey, we can be R rated, we can have an R rated fantasy film, let's do this. I did like the dynamic between Will Smith and Joel Edgerton, and again, I love the world. I just wish the movie, I just wish the movie itself chose a better storyline for the two characters in the two different worlds. Now, a sequel has been announced, and I am indeed looking forward to seeing the sequel. I just hope they can improve upon what they did in the first movie. Up next is a pretty big disappointment for me, especially seeing how big of a fan I am of the franchise. Fate of the Furious. This was the first Fast and Furious movie I haven't liked since 2009. In fact, Fast, Fast uh, 5 was fantastic, I thought. It was a great action movie. Fast and Furious 6 was insanely entertaining. Furious 7 was good, did have its share of issues. But the issue with Fate of the Furious was that the cast and chemistry just wasn't there this time. I felt the presence of Paul Walker really missing in this one. I felt the dynamic wasn't there with the cast, the jokes weren't as funny, they weren't as witty, and the plot itself was just so friggin' ridiculous that it, it goes beyond insanity. And I know that we still has the fun, over-the-top action sequences, it's just that at this point with the 8th installment, it feels like the franchise is running out of ideas, and it might be overstaying its welcome, unfortunately. And that's coming from a lifelong fan of the Fast and Furious movies, too, keep in mind. Next pick won't be controversial at all, but I'm gonna say it. It. I was not a fan, I'm not, I wasn't a huge fan of the 2017 It movie. While there are great elements in here, I loved the Kit cast, and I loved Pennywise. I thought those two elements worked well, but the movie itself just didn't work as a horror movie. I thought It was far superior in the coming of age story that it was telling. Again, all the kid performances were fantastic. I, I loved the dynamic. I felt the relationship between them all worked and it made sense. But the whole elements just didn't catch me. Yes, there were two big jump scares in the movie, but it's made in such a way where it's just big banging noise and no subtlety is put into those big scares. Some of the scares I thought came off as a bit cheesy, some of the special effects aren't fantastic, and over it for me, while I liked it on the first viewing, just hasn't stuck with me after the, uh, after the first viewing. Now, I am very excited to see a sequel, I cannot wait to see It Chapter 2, but as for the first one, it's not bad, again, there are great stuff in here, it's just as a whole, I don't think it worked fantastic. I say fantastic a lot, I know, I'm sorry. The next movie we're talking about, Justice League. Now, I enjoyed Justice League. I thought it was a fun, popcorn superhero movie. However, a Justice League movie just can't be an exposable action movie. You have, in 2012, we had The Avengers, which was a game-changing movie that united all of our favorite heroes, Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, Captain America, in such a spectacle way that not only, not only made it entertaining, but a great movie on its own. And Justice League just did not do that at all. The story was a mess, the villain sucked. I did really enjoy the dynamic between all of the actors. Wonder Woman, Batman, The Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg all worked well in the movie. Just the stuff happening around them, I didn't really care about it. And overall, a, a movie called Justice League should have been so much better than I actually was. The seventh movie I'm talking about, Murder on the Orient Express. And again, this is a movie that technically looks fantastic. I love the aesthetic of this. I thought Kenneth Branagh did a really good job of directing around the train, getting different shots, different variety of shots. I thought the production design was great. The, um, the costumes were good. And I especially, yeah, pretty much the, the, the look of the movie was great. And I thought Kenneth Branagh himself committed and he was great. The story itself to me was a snooze fest, though. I didn't care what was going on. None of the other cast members other than Kenneth Branagh got any development. They're just kind of there to make a big ensemble cast. And in general, I was just very bored during this movie. I have nothing against slow, bur slow burns by any means. Manchester by the Sea was the definition of a slow burn. It was my favorite, mo one of my favorite movies of 2016. And so watching it just... At the end of it, I just came to the realization that I didn't care what was going on in the story. I didn't care who committed the murder. I didn't care how the murder was committed, what was going on. Would I see a sequel? I would see a sequel. And I hope they improve upon it and just make it a better overall, more investing story this time around. And of course we knew, my last movie I'm talking about, you all know what it is. 
is a movie that I made a 16 minute video of why I hate it with a passion, a burning passion. And I have thought about it and I realized this is the worst movie I've ever sat through in my entire life and I never want to again. Transformers The Last Night. I didn't think they could get worse from Age of Extinction. I didn't. But holy shit, this movie sucks balls. This is just... This is just one big commercialization. There is no passion put into it. There is no effort put into it. It's just one steaming pile of absolute dog shit that didn't deserve to be made and didn't deserve to make the money it made. This movie is just... It's awful. Nothing makes sense in the movie. The plot is so inconsistent. The characters are inconsistent. It breaks continuity within the previous Transformer film, so hence the other ones don't even make sense. The action is just visual noise. I didn't care what the hell was going on during them, and by the end of it, it was just... It was so long, too. Oh my god. Age of Extinction, I think, was like 15 to 20 minutes longer than this one, but it felt an hour longer than Age of Extinction. The acting is terrible. The plot is just there. It's the same repeated plot elements we've gotten in the other Transformer movies that I just do not care about. I don't care that the Transformers have been here a long time. I don't care that they're looking for another item. This movie was just made to make money, and I understand it has its audience, but you have to evolve past its audience. And it shows this movie took a major dip commercially from Age of Extinction. Age of Extinction was a billion dollar movie. In fact, I have to say, Age of Extinction, the billion dollar movie hurts. And this movie made nearly half of that. It made nearly half of what Age of Extinction made. This video is sponsored by Purified Water. But yeah, last night, it's terrible. Please don't support any more of these Transformers. I am so sick of Michael Bay just milking away what he can with this franchise. And I think with this one, it might be dead. They might have to reboot. And I hope to God they do a better job than they have done with the previous five installments. But with that rant being settled, yeah, 2017 is a pretty solid year. Again, there are a lot of movies that I didn't see that probably would have made this list and would have made it more of an eh list. Again, I didn't hate most of these movies. A lot of them I thought were just disappointing, okay, and this Age of Ex uh, night, uh, Last Night was, yeah, that movie was just terrible. But I'm sure if I'd seen the Emoji movie, I'm sure if I'd seen Pirates of the Caribbean or um, Fifty Shades Darker, it would have made this list. But as it is, I'm pretty happy with 2017. Really solid of the year. But, keep in mind, not keep in mind, but I am going to be releasing a top, my top anticipated movies of 2018 coming very soon, probably landing sometime tomorrow. So keep in mind for that. And until next time, I'll see you all in my next review, hopefully coming soon. See you later, guys.